Hey everybody, welcome back to the Craft of Pearl podcast, a podcast about knitting, crocheting, and sometimes a little sewing thrown in there as well. My name is Jennifer. I live in central Alabama with my husband, our four children, and our two dogs. Uh, I am a crocheter from the age of 15 and a knitter for almost two and a half years now. So I wanna welcome any new viewers um, and also any returning viewers. Thank you so much for coming back to my podcast. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed Vlogmas. That was so much fun. I always enjoy getting to share little bits of my family with you. The kids really enjoy sharing their lives with you and getting to help me open Advent yarn and all of that. So this is the first podcast of 2023. And I'm so excited to share with you some things that I'm working on, some things that I frogged, and some kind of goals and aspirations I have for myself and um, for the channel. So, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crafted Pearl. Um, you can always contact me on either platform. I try to check Ravelry as much as I can, um, not on there as often as I'm on Instagram. You can also email me at thecraftedpearl at gmail.com. I do try to check that often as well if you have any questions or just wanna say hi. The first thing that we're gonna get into today is the current whips that I'm bringing into 2023. I have several from 2022 and even a whip from 2021 that I'm bringing into the new year. Um, and I want to share with you kind of what my goal is with each one. So the first one is the What Tomorrow Bring Shawl by Stephanie Lotvin of Telly Bean Knits. This was my advent shawl I used with a Blush Yarns Christmas Advent. And now that the pattern is completely out and in color, it's not a secret anymore. But I am about to start day 10 and I really really love how the colors are working up together I like that they contrast but they do also go together so I'm about to start day 10 this has been my TV knitting at night um, I really enjoy the different stitching techniques and that it kind of breaks it up with the garter section in between each new um, detailed section. I really do like that. I'm not in any rush to finish this. I am um, participating in the Adventually Mal, and that's gonna be hosted by, let me check my notebook. That's hosted by uh, Leah Loves to Knit and Breaking Yarn. They are hosting an, a Mal where you just use your Advents, things that you have even from years past. Any project that has an Advent yarn, you can do that. Uh, so I am participating in that. I want to finish it uh, by the time that mal ends, but even if I don't, that's okay because I'm really enjoying working on it, uh, which is the most important part. So I have this in a gnome bag from Paper Crane Yarns. Ashley is um, the owner of my local yarn shop and she made that. So that is whip number one. That's the most current whip. Whip number two is in a bag by Stitching Plaza. Um, my friend Lindsay gave this to me last Christmas as a gift and it has gnomes on it as well. I have a thing for gnomes. The whip that I'm working on with this project is the String of Light Socks, which is a pattern by Lindsay Shank Kirshner of Sock Witchery. I have second sock syndrome like a lot of knitters. Um, I finished one sock and I just don't wanna cast on that next one. With the same yarn and the same pattern, I want to cast on something new. I've never tried two at a time socks on the same cord, but I have discovered that I like doing my socks in tandem. So what that means is I split my yarn into two 50 gram balls, and then I knit the cuff on one and then the cuff on the other, and then the leg on one and the leg on the other. And I find that I'm always at a place on one sock or the other that's pretty easy, like knitting that I can take out with me in the car rider line or um, church or something like that. So I finished um, the decreases and finished my heel this morning. This yarn is Night Owl Fibers Cookies for Santa. I love the striping on this yarn. Absolutely love it. So 
I finished turning my heel and did all my decreases on that this morning and worked on the heel flap for this sock. Um, I did the heel flap during my 30 minutes of knitting. I've decided that in the mornings, my 30 minutes of knitting is going to be a, um, a sock project that I'm working on because it's easy to drink my coffee and talk to my husband or watch something in the mornings um, while I'm doing this. So my goal is to get this heel finished today. I have um, knit group tomorrow with some ladies um, from Paper Crane Yarns. So my goal is to have the heels finished so I can just have stockinette for the foot and the toe decreases and maybe finish these socks this weekend. So that is the second whip. And I know I said before that I really don't care that the stripes match on the sock, but I do care that the stripes match on the sock. I figured that out <laughs> because I sent this picture to my friend, Michelle. Look at that. Oh, that's just too good. I can't not match them up now. So it's too good, I love it. So even though they're Christmas socks, I will still wear them throughout the rest of this winter. Maybe it will be cold again soon because it's 70 degrees today. Okay, the next whip that I have coming in is the Frank Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. This is a whip that I started last year. Um, I have the first section completed. I need to pick up stitches. This is on waist yarn, so it's kind of all looped together. I have the first section completed. I need to pick up the stitches and start section B. Um, I really like this shawl. I just haven't really wanted to work on it lately. So my goal is to finish it because it's beautiful and I really would like to wear it um, during the winter and even early spring. It's a pretty light shawl, so I could wear it during early spring. I love those colors together. Love, love, love those colors together. I don't remember the yarns exactly. I think I put them in my Ravelry project page. I'm trying to be better this year about Ravelry project pages. Um, so I will link all of the pages that I have currently for these projects down below if you wanna check out yarns, needles. I try to make notes as much as I can along the way. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to message me or email me and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. That is whip number three. My next whip is the Choose Your Gnome Adventure by Sarah Shira of Imagine Landscapes. This is a whip from 2022, so last year. I have finished the hat on my gnome. It's adorable. I'm making the largest fingering weight size that she has available in the pattern. Uh, and the pattern is out now. It was a mystery pattern um, when we started, but it's out now. So I really love the hat and I'm gonna continue and finish that and hopefully be able to put that up in my craft room really soon. Cause I love gnomes. Whip number, let's see, that's number four. So this will be number five. This is, my first real crochet amigurumi, and this is the Sheldon Sheep pattern. I bought this kit from Arkansas Yarn Co. Sheldon Sheep. Universal Yarn is the pattern. I've started the crochet body this little body and the body is crochet the yeah, the body and the hat are crochet the arms the legs the ears and the head are all knit so I just have a little bit more to go with that and then I have the uh, black yarn for this body and this is universal yarn um, the delu deluxe bulky it's a super wash yarn this is Phantom Heather, and this color is the white color. Let's see. Is Pulp, that's the name of the white color. So I'm excited to finish that up. This will actually be a gift for um, my son. And I know a lot of you guys who are, are 
followers of the podcast and follow me online, you're thinking my thir my, my 12, not 13. I'm making him 13. My 12 year old son, why would he want something like that? What if, I think I've mentioned this on here before, but we're in the process of an adoption for our youngest son. Um, he is not with us now. His country is currently not open for adoptions. They've been closed since March of 2020, but hopefully they'll be opening up again soon and we'll be able to travel and bring him home. He's four. Um, and I want to try to finish a blanket and some little amigurumi things for him to have um, for when he comes home. And when we get to travel to him, I can bring those with us. So that will be for our youngest son. And my plan is to get that finished quickly as well. Um, really no deadline on when we're gonna travel, but I wanna have it finished and put away so I can start another project for him. I did frog one project that is from 2021, or I'm about to frog it rather. And this is just in like a little sheet bag that my mother-in-law gave me for Christmas. Pardon the crinkles. I am frogging a lazy Sunday state of mind sweater. This is a pattern by Nancy Ritchie of getting curly with it. It has nothing to do with the actual pattern. I love the pattern. I love the sweater. I just don't ever find myself gravitating towards this project. So when I want to work on something, I think, oh, I really need to finish that. And it's more out of obligation than actual desire. So I have a couple of ideas for this yarn for other sweaters, because I really would like to make a sweater out of it. It's the um, Knit Picks City Tweed. It's an air and weight yarn. And it is um, like a purplish color. It looks a little brown with this lighting, but it's purple. It's easier to see the purple on the sweater. But I love the little tweedy bits that are in the sweater. So I want to use this and I have a couple of ideas, but this particular pattern is not something that I'm really attracted to anymore. So I'm gonna frog it and use the yarn for um, for another project. I don't know that I will cast it on anytime soon. It may be later in the year for next winter, but I definitely want to use this yarn for another sweater. And to kind of get that lingering whip out of my list. So I don't feel obligated to work on that and I can feel free to work on other things. Okay, let's talk about finished objects, FOs. Um, currently, I have no finished objects for the year of 2023. It is just the first full week of January, so that's okay. I think I will finish those socks this weekend, my string of light socks. So that will be my first FO. And um, maybe the Sheldon Sheet Amigurumi will be the second one. Um, I want to cast on, for future cast-ons, I want to cast on a love note for my birthday sweater. My birthday is in March. The Love Note is a sweater that I've really had my eye on for a long time. Um, Nicole, Professor Pearl has made several of them. I have um, Maddie and Kristen, they've made some. I love notes, several people that I know and follow, just they look beautiful in them. I want that to be my birthday sweater. So my birthday is March the 20th and I have lots of time to be able to complete that. That will be in conjunction with the Imagine Knitting Cal that is hosted by the ladies of the Imagine Landscapes podcast. It's anything that you have dreamed of making for yourself, uh, whatever your imagination can come up with, and you can submit that for prizes, for their count. That's gonna be my entry into that, and my goal is to finish it for my birthday. So, um, I watched a podcast the other day, um, Do So Knits, and I will tag her below. She went through her Ravelry queue with, um, with us told us what yarn she had to use for what projects, put things in bundles. I love the idea of that. I really don't use Ravelry in that capacity right now. I would like to use it more in future um, projects. I don't have all of my yarn in stash on Ravelry. 
Um, but it's a really great idea. But I watched her podcast the other day, and one of the things that she said really stuck with me is that she does not buy patterns until she is ready to cast on the project. And that is something that I'm not good at. I want to support the designer. I see a pattern that I like and I have in my head, oh, I'll make that soon. I'll go ahead and cast that on tomorrow and I pay the money for the pattern. And now I have patterns that I look back in my library that are not my style anymore from when I first started knitting and really got back into crochet. Um, and things that I will probably never cast on that I've spent that money on. So a way that she showed us that we can support the designer still is that we can favorite the pattern and then put it in our, within our favorites, you can make bundles of different items, sweaters, hats, scarves, you know, what, however you want to name it. And that way, when it's time for you to cast on a project, you can look through your favorites, pick out that pattern and go ahead and purchase it then. But when you favorite it, it also helps out the designer and brings their pattern further up on the uh, the Hot Right Now page. And so people can find it more. Um, now I do still have some patterns that I want to support um, the designer immediately with their friends and things like that that I purchase regardless. But when it comes to larger projects like sweaters, um, shawls, things like that, I really want to start waiting until I'm ready to cast it on to purchase that pattern and be a little more um, conscious with the money that I spend on patterns for projects. Let's talk stash. Now I know a lot of people are working through eliminating stash. That will not be me. I am not a person who wants to get down to no skeins of yarn. I think that's great. If that's what you want to do, I think that's fantastic. I like having stash. I like it to look at, honestly. Yarn is beautiful. It inspires me. Um, it makes me happy. So I do like having yarn and stash here, but this year I really want to be more conscious of using the yarn I have for projects, looking through my stash before I go and purchase yarn elsewhere. I also um, want to be more diligent about not purchasing just single skeins. When I go into stores, when I visit yarn stores that are um, that are not in my area, I do purchase like their special store skein or if they're doing like an event, the skein for that event. I will purchase that for socks. But not going in just to purchase one skein here and there and then I don't have enough for anything other than maybe socks or a hat. So I went through and I counted all of my yarn and I broke it down into groups. So I have an, a notebook that's going to be my stash notebook and I'm going to update it for each month. So at the beginning of this year with my um, acrylic yarn, I have 28 skeins of acrylic yarn. Uh, as far as cotton yarn goes for dishcloths and things like that, I have 35 individual skeins and then one large cone of yarn. So I'm going to use those to make um, washcloths and things like that for um, teacher gifts, Christmas, that kind of thing, or just to give to a friend. So as far as um, just commercial yarn, that's the number, those are the numbers for that. For hand dyed yarn, I have two worsted weight skeins, one bulky, eight DK, 64 fingering weight skeins. Now, some of those are for sweaters. I do have multiples of those, but a lot of them are single skeins. And then I did count minis in my total yarn count. Um, they're all fingering weight minis, and I have 20 of those for a grand total of 159 skeins of yarn. I actually had my children and my husband and my sister and brother-in-law count or uh, not count, but guess the other day. I finished counting, they were all here. I went downstairs and I said, okay, I want you to guess how many skeins of yarn I have. And the numbers were really low. They were like, you have 50, you have, you know, 75. And Riley guessed and she said, I think you have 170 skeins of yarn, mom, because she knows how much I like yarn. And she was really, really close. So I have 159 skeins of yarn. So I have that broken down. And I've scribbled out a bunch because I've found skeins laying around the house that I haven't brought upstairs yet. 
things like that. So I've been scribbling out and adding to it, but I have my total for the beginning of the year. And then over here, I have already added a skein of yarn, a fingering weight and a mini um, so far this year. And then when I finish a project, I will write what um, skein I took out. One of the things that I do want to do is I'm not going to have, I don't have to finish the entire skein of yarn. I pull that skein out for a project and that skein is officially out of my stash and the scraps can be left over for any scrappy project or another sock or anything like that that I want to cast on later. Um, so it will come out of my, it will come out of my stash, the whole skein will. So I do it by skein and not by yards or grams. I'm excited to see what my stash is going to do this year. Um, I'm still going to buy yarn, I, especially for my birthday. I love buying yarn for my birthday. I'll still have yarn that comes in from friends. I'll gift yarn to people, um, maybe out of my stash. Maybe I'll do some giveaways on here of some yarn out of my stash. I have a um, blanket project coming up for my youngest son that's going to take a huge chunk of the acrylic skeins out of my stash. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see where my stash goes this year. I really can see breaking it down by the types of yarn. I really do see where most of my um, time, like I want, where I want to spend my time and what kind of yarn I like to use the most. But I do want to try to spread out and maybe use more bulky yarn this year or more worsted weight yarn this year. Um, I don't have to just do fingering weight, but it's pretty exciting to be able to have so many skeins at my disposal to be able to do whatever I can dream of. I have some acquisitions from Paper Crane Yarns. My friend Michelle was here last week. She's visiting for Christmas. Um, so we went to the store, showed her around, let her meet Ashley, and we did a little shopping. Um, I did not buy a skein of yarn for myself. I bought a skein of yarn for a friend. So Lindsay, if you're watching right now, I need you to fast forward because this is for you and you don't need to see it. Hopefully I'll have it shipped out to you by the time this goes up, but look away if you don't want to see it now. This is called Unicorns. And this is her um, 75 Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. This is her sock fingering weight. Look at all the pretty colors in there. It really is like a unicorn. It really is like a unicorn. So that's for my friend, Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay, you can watch again. I'll be sending that out to you soon. She has the best notions in her shop. I got twice sheared sheep the tip tie point protectors to put on the ends of your needles. So one end connects to one needle, one end connects to the other. And when you throw it in your bag, it keeps the, the project from slipping off of your needles. Mine will kind of jostle around in my purse sometimes and will slip off of my needles. So I'm excited to try those. I also purchased from the twice sheared sheet, the snag free row counter with a little kitty cat on the bottom. I've always wanted to try one of these. I'm more of a paper pencil girl, like I'll count, or even on my iPad, I'll use the edit feature, marking feature, where I can just put like a dot to count how many rows. I'm excited to try this out. So that's my purchases from Paper Crane Yarns. Oh, I did have one more I forgot to tell you about. I did buy something for myself but it wasn't yarn. It's a Della Q bag. Isn't it so pretty? This is waxed canvas. I'm excited to see how this um, kind of wears over time. It's box bottom and inside there's a baby bag. I'm so excited. This will be good for my shawl and this could be for socks. So it is a box bottom. And it has a little handle if you wanted to clip it on something. It's so, so pretty and so soft. Ashley has some of these in her shop still. I will link her website below if you're interested in purchasing these from her. She has those listed online as well. But I'm so excited. This is my first Delicue bag. 
and I can't wait to use it, especially with the wax canvas. I'm excited to see how it softens and changes over time. So that was my purchase from Ashley. The next thing I've added to my stash this month is my Sock Yarn Society box from Arkansas Yarn Co. It came in the mail yesterday and I threw it in the car when I was on my way to pick up my kids from school and immediately opened it. And I'm absolutely in love, just like I am every single time I open up one of, uh, one of her packages. Lori's yarn is just, it's just my favorite. So I wanna show you guys what was in the package. If you've not gotten yours yet and don't want to be spoiled, you might want to fast forward, but most of you should have them by now and have opened them as well. Lori does an unboxing on her channel with Lindsay from Always Yarn First every month, and she goes over everything that's in the box and shows you um, all the details. Their 2022 theme was a few of our favorite things, and I don't know if that's the theme that they're gonna go with through for 2023, but it's a great theme and I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So in the package, wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. We have, let me get it out, where'd it go? A designer stitch marker set from The Sexy Knitter. I love this so much. It's the little snaps. And then inside, it comes with stitch markers. So I have inside this one is a purse with a little bow, sparkly bow. Diamond shoe. And then I have three of these little diamond studs. It's hard to see, let's see if I can make it a little clear. Three of these diamond studs. They're super, super pretty. So that's from The Sexy Knitter. I love her stitch markers. She has pretty much anything you could think of. She has um, food themes. There's strawberry shortcake for people who like nostalgic things. There's Barbie. I have one that's Chick-fil-A that I really like. Um, it's got a cow and a chicken and like red hearts on the inside. I really, really like that. So that is, um, that is the stitch marker set that we got from her. We also got a coupon code to use in her shop. We got a coupon code to use in Arkansas Yarn Co. And I've already used it. I scratched it off in the car and ordered yarn in the car, y'all. I'm telling you, that's how much I love Lori's yarn. And I ordered the yarn to go with the pattern that was in the box. We also got some stashed tea, breakfast in Paris. I'm excited to try that out. We got a pattern, I can cover this up. The Marled Crochet Chevron Blanket. And that is by Christine Lucatus, maybe? I hope I'm saying that right. And it uses 12 skeins, so almost like an advent um, blanket. But this year I'm gonna use Lori's Sock Yarn Society yarn for that blanket. And you pair it with some of her wedding cake color, which is really just a, an off-white base. It's beautiful. So I ordered some of that to start that blanket yesterday. Lori also includes in her box stitch markers that she makes. We have Arkansas, State of Arkansas. And then a little blue purse. Isn't that cute? I love it. I'm gonna be using that on my, on my project. The yarn, I just got a notification a minute ago that the yarn shipped. So once it gets here, I'm gonna go ahead and start that blanket with this month's yarn, which is uh, Louis V. So this is a Louis Vuitton inspired yarn. Lori is the best with speckles, guys. She has a white base, but her speckles are absolutely the best. Look at that. 
I cannot wait to see how this knits up. It also came with a mini, and I'm gonna put this in my mini stash to use for heels, toes, and cuffs on another sock, and this is the Kate Spade. And it's purple, so you know I love it. I get my yarn from her, um, the Yummy High Twist base. It's my favorite base that she has. Her Yummy Plush is really good too, but high, uh, the Yummy High Twist, like, do you just hug yarn and smell it? I do that every time I get a skein of Lori's yarn. It's just the best. So, I get on the Yummy High Twist. I ordered the Wedding Cake, um, the Wedding Cake skeins on her Yummy High Twist as well just because I wanted the texture to be consistent throughout the um, blanket. I'm really excited. And I'm excited to start a crochet project. I haven't crocheted in a long time. And I really wanted to try something um, that I could work on a little bit every month. And this was just perfect. When I got the pattern yesterday, I was, I was totally, that was exactly what I was looking for. So perfect, perfect, perfect. The last acquisition that I have Actually, I have two more. My husband bought me a Nitty Naughty. I don't have it put together right now because we have to sand it and wax it and do all that. But I'll put a picture up here of the one that he purchased for me and I'll link it down below. I received a fiber box and a drop spindle for my mother-in-law for Christmas. I showed that on one of my Vlogmas episodes and I'm going to try my hand at hand spinning or spinning with the drop spindle and he bought me a Nitty Naughty to wind my yarn on. So I'm excited to get that out and try it. We're gonna to try to sand that down and wax it soon. So it'll be ready to go. And I'm reading up on um, spinning yarn. I'm a little nervous to start trying, but I know I've gotta start somewhere. So I'm looking up kind of videos and things like that to get more of a handle on it before I start. And then I'll show you guys, uh, I'll try to do a little video of some progress that I'm making along the way. Excuse me. I also purchased on Amazon a pocket scale. I use just a food scale for my um, for my yarn to weigh it, but I found that it's not very accurate. Um, and I always have it either up here in my yarn room or it's it's never where I am when I need it. So I'm gonna put this in my bag. I'll have this in my bag with me, and I can weigh um, when I'm. If I'm doing a muscle burg and I need to know how many grams of yarn I have left before I start the decreases, that kind of thing, I will have this with me and I'm very, very excited about it. It's been on my list for a while and I had some Amazon points and I bought it. I'm excited. I'll link that down below as well. And that is it for acquisitions this month or this podcast rather. My goal is to uh, podcast every two weeks. I really want to set aside time to make that happen. And Fridays are really good days um, for that to happen. So we're gonna transition over into some um, Instagram questions. The first question that I got was from my sister who asked, how many skeins of yarn do you have, Jennifer? And it's 159, Brittany. Actually, 161 now. <laughs> I got more yarn, yay! So, um, I'm not ashamed of the amount of skeins of yarn that I have. She likes to give me a hard time about it, but she's just teasing me. So, um, Maddie of Made by Maddie 33 asked me when I was coming back to Conway. Um, I'll be there next weekend. Yeah, go ahead and get your craft room ready and I'll, I'll drive right on up. I really want to come visit you guys again soon. I miss you guys so much and can't wait for the yarn crawl again this summer. But I do hope to get up and visit you guys before then as well. So, um, my friend Lindsay asked how I got to be so awesome. Um, my mom, <laughs> she raised me this way. Um, my mom is really awesome. And, um, no, I, I don't, I don't think of myself in that way, but you're very sweet to say that. Um, you're a very sweet friend and, um, yeah, it's just, I love it that you asked that question. That's so funny. I um, actually talked to my mom the other day and she asked me to teach her how to knit and I'm very excited about that. I've wanted to teach her how to knit for a while and she crochets, she taught me how to crochet. And so I'm very excited to go shopping and um, teach her how to knit, which transitions into a question I got from Nicole from Professor Pearl. And she asked how I learned to knit. Like November of 2020, I taught myself how to knit. I tried several times before and I got really frustrated and couldn't figure out 
how to hold the yarn. Did I want to throw it? Did I want to pick it? What did I want to do? So finally in November of 2020, I said, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to try something. And I watched a lot of YouTube videos and I made a lot of mistakes, but I finally figured it out. And once I got it, it really just clicked. I'm a crocheter first. So I naturally lean towards the continental style of knitting. Um, I want to practice throwing more, the English style more this year, just so I can work on color work more and have a different way to knit if my wrist gets tired from constantly, you know, moving my yarn around, holding it and tensioning it in my left hand. But yeah, I taught myself through YouTube. There are so many awesome tutorials out there. Very Pink Knits is one that I used a lot. And um, a lot of her tutorials taught me how to cast on, how to knit, things like that. Uh, my mother-in-law did try to show me at one point and I, I did a little bit with straight needles, but I just, it didn't click. It finally clicked in November of 2020. And once it clicked, I have just been nonstop since. I love learning new things and um, yeah, knitting has just now become a, a great, great passion of mine. It's how I relax. It's how I show love to others by making them things and I just love it so much. So if you ever have any questions, please feel free to send those to me on Instagram or Ravelry or email those to me and I'll be happy to answer them on the next podcast. Life updates. We are officially back from Christmas break. The kids went back to school this week. They started on Wednesday and it was a short, this is a short week. So it's perfect to kind of get them back into the routine. Um, my husband still works from home most of the time. Um, he has been working from home since the beginning of COVID. He goes in a couple of days a week, but he is here most of the time. Uh, I am no longer teaching. I am home full time now. So I'm able to go and be with my children at school and, and help out with their teachers as much as I can. Um, and also to put more um, focus and time and energy into my family, taking care of my home. And then after that, my yarn um, craft, knitting, crochet, sewing some, and growing my YouTube channel. One of the things that I want to do this year is really be more consistent with my episodes. I was once a month and then I took a break for like six months and then I came back and then I didn't do anything until Vlogmas. And I really want to be more consistent and grow my community here on YouTube and Instagram as well. So my goal is to record every two weeks. Now that I have some more time during the day to sit down and knit, more projects I think will be accomplished. I have um, taken time to really think about my knitting and what I use my knitting for. And I use my knitting to relax. If it's stressing me out, I don't need to knit. I need to put it away because knitting is my escape. And so when I, my anxiety is high or even if I'm dealing with a bout of depression or I am just frustrated at things going on, I will find myself just 10 minutes to sit down and knit and it really does help calm me down. Um, but I really want to grow this channel more, spend more time with you guys, maybe do some make-alongs, maybe some um, Zoomed at nights, who knows? Who knows what's ahead for the Crafted Girl podcast, but I'm excited to see where this year takes us. I'm excited for all of the things that I'm gonna create this year and all the fun that I'm gonna have with all of you. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys what I was wearing today. I am wearing the boxy chevron sweater and I'll put in a full picture, but this was the sweater that we made for the um, Arkansas yarn crawl last year. Let's see if I can stand up and show you this one. So there's the chevron detail in the bottom and it's a um, high low hem in the back. This is the first time I have worn the sweater because I just now wove the ends in and I hate weaving ends in. So it's the first time I've worn the sweater today. Um, I have um, noticed that the neckline is a little big. So I talked to Maddie this morning and she told me how I can fix it and kind of bring the neckline in more. So I'll be more comfortable wearing it and we'll wear it more. I love this sweater. It's so comfortable. This is all knit picks yarn. 
Um, and again, I'll link the Ravelry account down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do so. I post in my stories over there pretty much daily and on the grid when I finish a project or want to show um, kind of how uh, a project's coming along. So I really appreciate you watching today. Thank you so much for being here. Happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.